All right, everyone. So we're going to look at works breakdown structure in this lesson. It's one of those concepts that's so central to project management and especially planning and scheduling. Uh, and unfortunately, it's often overlooked or skipped or not enough time is spent on it before we start scheduling. So for me, it's, it's just a concept that I want to explain in detail so that you understand it's very important to spend a lot of time on this and conceptualizing this before we start scheduling. So works breakdown structure, what it essentially is, is it facilitates two functions for us in scheduling. The first one is it subdivides our project scope into smaller components, into project deliverables or work breakdown uh, packages, which is just more manageable components. And now what makes this step a bit complex is the fact that there are many ways in which we can uh, facilitate this breakdown. So you've got different ways of doing it. Some ways are very comfortable and it just helps your project and others are uncomfortable. It's unstructured and, you know, it just doesn't support your project effectively. Secondly, a works breakdown structure facilitates a level of detail that we want to see in our schedule, which will support our execution and the monitoring and the controlling of our project. So in this example that I've got here, if you look at the concrete slab, for instance, we can simply add tasks below this works breakdown structure component directly, or we can decide to break it down into smaller bits, which will increase our level of detail. Okay, so let's explore this level of detail concept a bit further. Okay, so let's say somebody decided the level of detail of a works breakdown structure should take this package, this component, the concrete slab, and we're not going to divide it further into more detail. So we, we had a very low level of detail here. And for the sake of the exercise, guys, let's just assume that my productions are correct with the assumptions of this particular case. I want us to focus on the principles here. And looking at these productions, my links basically means that after staging and decking, after two days of staging and decking, we can start with the rebar and services. And then after about five days of rebar and services, we can start pouring the concrete. Although, because it's only six days, but due to that finish to finish link with my concrete, it just moves it out there. So we can start there based on the links, but it just shifts it to that point. And then uh, also staging and decking, once it's complete, we need at least two days thereafter for the rebar and services. So looking at my logic, it's 100% complete, let's assume, or uh, intact for this exercise. And let's also assume my durations and productions are 100% accurate for my particular site. So there's nothing wrong with this sequence of activities, except if you look at the level of detail, we have to ask the question, is this sufficient to control and monitor our project? Moving down, if we now decide, all right, let's rather break this down into more details, you'll see somebody said in terms of works breakdown structure guys we're going to have this slab but then we're going to divide this into more smaller components uh, that's more manageable now we increase the level of detail on this slab and i want you to see the effect of this so we've got again our staging and decking that's two days per slab linked to each other we've got our rebar and services and then we've got our concrete pause once each and every component has been complete. Now you'll agree that this is a, a higher level of detail, but we've got much more control. Because at this point, if something should happen on the casting of that section two, we can quickly isolate it and see the impact, rearrange our schedule, revise the baseline, whatever we need to do. So this level of detail makes more sense. It's got a lot of finish to start links which is simpler to manage and cleaner so i've got finish to start links on all my tasks right up to the end and if you look at the end dates here that 2 september 16 october it's exactly the same as my as my bulk item over there and if you look at staging and decking in isolation here you'll see it forms the same kind of path and spans across the same calendar length as my uh low level of detail here at the top so it's one of those rules of thumb to say when we have more detail increased detail we have increased control the negative of that is obviously it's a bit more work our schedule is a bit more complex but our links are 
uh, much easier, lo you know, logical to interpret, and we've got a lot more control. If you have less detail, it's obviously less effort, but we lose in terms of control. So less detail also means less control in our schedule. It's also sometimes not completely accurate because this we can send these concrete pour dates to a, to our particular subcontractor or supplier of concrete. That just makes a lot more sense to prepare for those days we're going to cast concrete. In this example, there's nothing wrong with my links. It's logical. It's 100% accurate. But if you look at the way in which the software uh, spaces these items, it's not quite accurate that we're going to bundle our concrete right at the end. And in Candy, you can't split the task like in Microsoft Project. So it this level of detail would definitely then not facilitate an accurate schedule for us to monitor and control this project. So we need the uh, breakdown into more detail in this particular case. Now, the problem is usually that once you commit to your works breakdown structure subdivision and your level of detail, you kind of stuck with that for the rest of the project. And it becomes very difficult and uncomfortable to change that mid project. And that's why it's so important, guys, that you spend a lot of time conceptualizing your works breakdown structure, feeling it, thinking about the most effective way and level of detail that's going to allow you to monitor and control the project on the level that it needs to be controlled at. So let me show you how I would approach this pipeline project of ours so that you can just get a glimpse of the process and the way in which I make my decisions. And it'll give you a good indication of I will implement it but again guys it's not you might do it differently and it might be even a better way than mine so there's no right or wrong there's definitely better and poorer ways to do it okay so on the first level the highest level of my uh, works breakdown structure I will have an execution phase this is sometimes to allow for the client because they will have their own design phase um, execution phase and then maybe a closeout phase or different phases at the top that as a contractor, we might not be part of. Then on the second level, I've decided to divide my work packages into six main components. So on level two, we're going to have milestone dates. I'm going to establish on site. I'm going to have a lay pipe section. I'm going to have the new pump room as a separate package, the install manuals, and then also the final connections and commissioning. So. In this case, for instance, my install manuals could have been part of just that laying pipe section. I've decided to put them on level two because in this case, it's going to be a subcontractor that's going to execute them. So having it on a separate level, it just makes my management of that a bit easier. It isolates it for that subcontractor. So you can see it's a practical consideration. It's preference. But if you would like to, you know, place that component below laying of pipes, that would also be correct. Nothing wrong with that. Then I've also decided to divide my laying of pipe section on level two into two separate sections. Again, this is from a practical execution standpoint. I know from experience that we can test those pipe sections between manuals. So, so we have manual to manual in that first pipe section, zero to 200. And then we've got a manual and manual on the second portion there. So that's how we're going to test it and hand it over. So that's why I will just divide it on a level three into those two components. And then I will also, for the sake of control and having a, a better level of detail, I will divide my second pipe section, um, the 2000 meter section into 200 meter sections so that it's smaller, so that I have more finish to start links and then I have a better control in my schedule later on. Okay, wow, guys, uh, what a mouthful. So I hope you could see in the way that in which I approach this, I hope you can see how my development of my works breakdown structure is guided by my personal preferences sometimes. Sometimes it's technical know-how, sometimes it's a practical constructability consideration. And sometimes it goes about level of detail. So all those things and all the experience goes into conceptualizing this. And if it doesn't work as I execute it, I'll learn from it. And next time I will make some adjustments to my thinking and the way in which I will structure this. 
Right, so in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how we're going to transfer this now into my Candy uh, as, a, as a further step to just getting my works breakdown structure in so that we can go and focus on each package individually.